and sprinkle it in. That's it. Now that's that back position. Yeah. It'll take ages, so it'll take quite a big handful. That's right. And sprinkle it in, and go over the whole surface of the bowl. That's it. Quite a, quite a pace if you can. Oops. So, yeah, I mean you're having to reach up, unfortunately, but it makes a good shot because we can see what you're using. <laughs> rather than from the hopper. I don't like those hoppers because they, they, the plaster stays in them for too long and it goes off. Right. So keep going. Yeah. Well, basically you keep going until you get uh, little islands of dry plaster appearing on the surface. And all the while, while you're sprinkling in these little bubbles, you can see all the bubbles mm -hmm. coming up. That's all the air kind of releases this way. This is, doing it this way means that you get no air in your plaster, or you have far less chance of getting any. Consequently, obviously, no air bubbles on the surface of your cast. You also get what's called the optimum mix, which is the um, perfect proportion of plaster and water. Um, and the optimum mix is, is the hardest and strongest. Okay, it takes quite a lot, see. It doesn't, months, yeah. it doesn't increase the volume quite as much as you'd expect. I think I've made far too much, haven't I? Well, I don't have. worry too much, because a whole bag like that isn't, you know, it's about six, seven pounds, so it's not... not um, and usually there's someone in the room that will use a little bit up. Okay. Uh, yeah, what's what's there? Oh. Not quite there. Yeah. No, a little bit more. I, I mean, if anything, we're going to leave this a little bit thin because of all the the fine detail in your cast. Just keep going, keep going. What you can do, actually, even at this stage, if you think you've made too much, stop now. Yeah. Thanks, Heidi. Pour a little off. So a bit more, a bit more. Keep going, keep going. Stop. That's about it. Okay. That's all going to go hard in the, in the bin. Right. So, so now I'm shaking. And now, yeah, now you see you're on to the point of maximum saturation that's coming now. So the, there it is, maximum is that saturation. It? Well, One I think what more. you're doing, tiniest bit more, but then that'll be it. Perfect. I'd stop there. Okay. What I tend to do with these is then, then tap the bowl a bit. Just tap it gently on the, that's it. Just make sure it's released. So that the, any, yeah, now, the, now what you can do is give it... A very, very gentle, uh, well I call it an agitation rather than a mix, because mixing implies that you're going to sort of whisk a load of air into it, which is the, the reverse, you know, you're not making meringue here, you want, you want well, no, no air. air at all. So if you just put a, uh, a hand in and just wiggle it about, that's it, exactly right, and then just agitate the air out, just so that it gets, and you can put your hand right in and make it nice and feel so it feels nice and smooth, oh, yes. no lumps. Yes. You know, oh, and okay. you get a good, well distributed but not sort of plaster. scooping your fingers in to make a exactly. air bubble. Exactly. Oh yes. Okay. Perfect. And I, although you, you've probably got about 15 minutes um, before it sets with the crystal and, and you know if you use cold water and it's, it's not you know it's quite fresh plaster. Um, so now you're ready to sort of pour in. Now with this I would say pour it very gently but as you go I mean you could almost you can't really use a brush because it might damage the mould but if you pour it and let it flow across the surface, and just do a little first of all, not fill it right up. And that's it, and let it flow in as it goes, that's it. That's it, and then you can... It's going in, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, it'll go in. Just slowly. That's it, that's it, keep going. Let it just sort of run across. It'll fill up every nook and cranny. There are a few lumps there. Yeah, well, th th a few lumps won't matter. Okay. That's good. Now, but th That's to make sure, probably. I'd stop there for now, and then I would start to do this sort of thing. Oops. Pick it up and do a lot of sorry about this, but <laughs> a lot of agitation like that because you can see all those little air bubbles. Well, maybe you can just come up to the surface. Now, in, in commercially, they have vibrating tables. That yeah, right. Like this, literally, just vibrate all the air out of the moulds. Um, yeah, yeah. Look, there's, there's 
That's it. So the more you do that, the more chance there is that any of those little bubbles might have, might release. With a rigid mould or a rubber mould, you can brush the plaster in and make sure that you get good contact with the whole mould surface. But with a, a clay mould, which is a very quite an unusual situation, if you were to brush it on, all you'd do is damage the detail that you've made. You'd end up with brush strokes all over the surface. So we've got to be a bit careful here. So as long as the plaster's a little on the thin side, and you do plenty of agitation. Yeah, I think that's about it. Just find a nice level place and leave it to set. And I'd, I'd leave it to set for, um, well, really the longer the better. You know, it's fully hard after about two days. You know, so you could easily leave that till next week before you release it. If you were in a hurry, you could do it in an hour's time if you're very, very careful. But you might as well leave it. And if you leave it to dry right out, then all that happens is that the, the clay dries out and it shrinks. Shrink, so. Yeah. So then, when you come in, don't. What you shouldn't do. This is the one thing you really shouldn't do. Is, is pull dry clay off because that will snap off the detail. Then you should soak it. But we'll look at that next time. Okay. Right. Scraping out this way, you can scratch the mould surface. So you've got to be very, very careful. Like I say, I mean, if, 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 if you get to this kind of stage, where well, there's still a bit of a covering of clay and then you let it dry out, then, then the rest of it will come out so clean that it will be so much easier. Okay. So rather than risk damaging all that delicate, delicate Stay little Stay away stuff, from there. Well, just, just get the bulk of the clay out and then leave the rest to just dry right out until next week. And then we'll give it a quick wash, a quick soak, and that will just dissolve away and you'll have a perfectly clean, crisp, you know, imm immaculate mould. Thank you. So I think that's the best bet, quite honestly. Okay. Recording now, so we could just be very interested to see how this has come out. There's the mold, there's the cast. Bits of all right, aren't they? Whereas yeah, before they were a little round, I don't like that. I suppose the nose, you know, it yes, could have been deeper or something, and, yes, and then come out further. That looks good, actually. It's, it's brilliant because of having to think in reverse. That was very difficult. Negative. Yeah.